at least see if they can do so. They may still be even, Condridge, after it's over tonight. That's a possibility, but uh, I think that's the best way to handle it. Let's play football. A squibber picked up at the 20. Out to the 30. No running room. And finally, knocked down at about the Charles Pool. At around the, uh, well, they're going to spot it just across the 25, it appears. 26-yard line. And at that point, the Tennessee Volunteers will put it in play. There's number 21, the much-talked-about Heath Schuler, stepping out to direct the team. Aaron Hayden will open that tailback, number 24, who picked up some weight in the offseason. Looks a little bit more like a fullback. Heath Schuler turns, gives to Hayden his tailback, comes outside. Got a little bit of running room, across the 30 up to about the 32. Tennessee offensive starters tonight. There you see the quarterback, Heath Schuler, big guy, 6'3", 208. David Horn, J.J. McCluskey, Craig Faulkner, a key man, Aaron Hayden, and Mario Brunson. Then it's Mike Stuhl on the line, Bubba Miller, Brian Spivey, Jeff Smith, and James Warren. We'll set the rest of the starters as we go. Here's Heath Schuler up to the line of scrimmage now with his second play. Delay in the middle, and it is Aaron Hayden up close to the 39-yard line. Let's take a look at the southwestern Louisiana defense. James Atkins, a giant. He's about 300 pounds, 6'6". Six, six. Conrad Lewis and John Robinson. And the backers are James Pennington, Patrice Alexander, a key man, John Wolf, Harold Nash, Donald Collins, and Orlando Thomas in that secondary, Thomas is one of the outstanding players who will be here on this field this year. A real big hitter. Heath Schuler brings his club up. Looking now at a third down situation. Pitch back to Hayden, trying to get to the 40. It does get to the 40-yard line before he is knocked down. Right side of the Southwest Louisiana defense converging on him. The outside linebackers coming up rather quickly. It appears they're playing Condridge. It is a three-man front, but in reality, it's a five because those backers step up to the line of scrimmage. Yes, they do. And what they've done the first two plays, they've given a keep a different look. The first time they lined up in man coverage and came after him, and the last play they were lined up in a cover two situation. And I think what they're trying to do on defense is maybe confuse the young quarterback who hadn't had enough snaps under his belt to be experienced. There's Schuler back. His first pass intercepted. Threw it too high. It's intercepted, and southwestern Louisiana is going to be in great field position on the Tennessee 35 yard line. The man we talked about, Orlando Thomas. Watch him. He's the great safety, number 42, Condridge. Little rollout, the ball just got away from him, but the defensive end really made a great play by forcing the pass. It was just uh, not a good pass by Heath and a good play by Orlando Barrett. All right, the Tennessee defense now, mm -hmm. it's young, and it digs in here with their first break in this ball game going to USL. Last year, they averaged only 13 points a ball game. Here's the Handoff in the middle to the tailback, nothing doing. Jeff Tullis at the bottom of the stack that time, knocking down the ball carrier, Steve Mosak. Let's take a look at the offense of the Southwestern Louisiana Ball Club. Tawan Hayes is the quarterback, and uh, the tight end and wide receiving core there, and there's some good ones headed by Wade Butler. On the line, Gilberto Placinia, a very good player. Brett Yarborough, perhaps the most talented of that crew on the offensive line. All right, it's second down. Here's Hayes handing to uh, Mosek his tailback again. He gets a little bit of running room off right tackle. Down to about the 30-yard line. Let's take a look at the defenders. Shane Bonham, Jeff Tullis, Corey Stone, and Todd Kelly up front. The backers are George Kidd. Reggie Ingram's in the middle, and Ben Talley, who saw quite a bit of action last year. In the backfield, it'll be Tavio Henson instead of Session. But the others are the starters that you see there on the screen. Session has an E injury and will not play tonight. He'll be backed up, by the way, by a true freshman, Deron Jenkins. Here is Taiwan Hayes rolling back to his right. Wants to throw. A little pressure. Got a man in the flat, and it is complete and a first down inside the 15-yard line. Complete to Wade Butler, a man we've talked about. Let's take a look at it, Condridge. 
they did a great job of flooding the zone this time. They just uh, send one guy deep, one guy underneath, and one guy to the flat. It's uh, flooding a zone, and they did a great job of executing that play. In his career, that's reception number 123 for Wade Butler, who holds that mark at USL. All right, first down and 10 to go now for Taiwan Hayes. Everybody jumps, flags fly. Question is, did Southwestern Louisiana move or did Tennessee jump offside? We'll wait for the official indication here. Extremely muggy night. We got about a 30% chance of showers. Hopefully they will hold off. The wind is out of the south at about 15 miles per hour. Take a look. Yes, just a little step there. <laughs> little anxious, a little anxious, ready to get off the ball there. So they step off five. It'll be first down and 15 yards to go. Ball just across the 20. Delay in the middle. Tennessee smelled it pretty good, but he still stumbled forward. Mosek for a little bit of yardage before Jeff Tullis, 6'1", 261 pound senior, tripped him up. Eh, about a yard or so. Make it second down and 14. Tell us, Condridge is one of those players who's been around for a long time, paid his dues, and is getting rewarded tonight. He sure has. He's, uh, he, I think he even started as a running back, and then he's gone from tackle to end and now back to tackle. And he's really worked hard in the offseason, and it's paying off for him. Here's Hayes keeping down the right side. Steps through for a little bit of running room. Across the 15 to the 14, perhaps, before he is knocked down. Taiwan Hayes, who's five foot nine, slippery quarterback, got not the greatest arm in the world, perhaps, as a passer, but he's a very, very good runner and a very good option man. They spot it on the 14-yard line, where it becomes a big down here for the defense. Big down for the Rachel Cajuns as well. Third down and ten. Relatively young and inexperienced Tennessee line and secondary digging in. Taiwan Hayes wants to throw, got by one man, throws in the flat complete, but knocked out of bounds at the nine yard line, short of the first down. So we probably will have our first field goal attempt. That was great execution again by the, with the same play that they actually ran to the right side. Uh, it's a flood pattern to the field. Taiwan Hayes just sprinted out and uh, chose the short guy this time instead of the intermediate guy but uh, that Tennessee being uh, Todd Thomas that's right all right we're going to have the field goal attempt here by the Regent Cajuns ball will be spotted at about the 17 yard line it'll be Richie Cunningham how's that name happy days are here again huh Richie Cunningham sets it down it's up there and it is good so the Ragin' Cajuns draw first blood here tonight to start this new season after a Heath Schuler interception. Interception of a Heath Schuler pass. The Ragin' Cajuns turn it into three points. And Tennessee finds themselves behind in the opener by a score of three to nothing. Next week, Tennessee goes on the road for a big Southeastern Conference game down at Georgia. Then Florida comes in here. So some of the Tennessee players may be young, Conrad, but they're going to have to grow up awfully quick. Very quickly, very quickly. Uh, Georgia next week is going to be a test. But I think this next series coming up is going to be a, a indicative of what the Tennessee offense is going to have to do. Are they, are they going to fold up when they make mistakes, or are they going to come through and, and, and be the champions that everybody's coached them to be? I think this series is going to be very important for them. That play, uh, seven plays covered 34 yards and puts the Ragin' Kitchens on the board three to nothing. Tennessee comes in as a 21 point favorite, but if, if you've looked around today and what has happened in some of the season openers and seen how things have gone, you know that point spreads this early in the ball game or predictions are rather meaningless. An awful lot of teams sputtering on offense, it appears. It kind of like baseball, I think, Condridge, at this stage, the Pitchers are early in the season are usually ahead of the hitters, and I think the defense in football is usually ahead of the offense. That's usually the case, especially early on, but the offenses will come in, get better as the season progresses. Ronald Davis is deep. Here it comes. It's going to bounce down to the end zone and into the end zone. He's going to bring it out of there. 
looking for some running room. He's got great speed, bounces off of one man, tries to get outside, can't do it. He's nailed down at the 20-yard line. Actually, did a pretty good job of returning that one 20 yards. Let's go down to the sidelines and Ted Hall. Ted? Bob and Condridge, the 900 Raging Cajun fans and players benefited from Heath Shuler's first interception. And one Tennessee ball did, Jerry Colquitt. Those kind of plays may get him into the game more and more and eventually starting. But as he threw that interception, Colquitt did not celebrate in any way. In fact, he was upset as the rest of the teammates. As soon as Heath got off the phone with the coaches, he came over, gave words of encouragement, said what he saw happen, what went wrong. They're working together as a team. Okay, thank you, Ted. Mario Brunson at fullback. Aaron Hayden at tailback. It's Tayden. Hayden who goes off left tackle, and he picks up two yards, perhaps, before he is knocked down. And the hit is made out there by the outside linebacker, William Sims. Aaron Hayden picked up perhaps 10 pounds in the off season. So he's up around the 212 pound range uh, right now. He's had five attempts for 14 yards early in this ball game. Little man Stewart, of course, will see action later as will Charlie Garner at tailback. Here is a handoff once again to Aaron Hayden. And he got a couple of more yards up to about the 25. A little closer to three. It'll make it a five yards shy of a first down with a third down situation coming up. James Atkins, that giant, 6'6", 290 plus pounds at the bottom of it. Take a look, Country. Just a little lead play, and it was a great block there by Mario Brunson, lead blocker. And... Uh, Hole closed up pretty quickly, though. So it's third down at five. Let's see what Schuler has. Got trips on the left side this time, and he's rolling that way. He pulls it down, and he's going to be a little bit short of the first down. Looks like about a yard short of the first down, and it'll probably set up a Tennessee punting situation here early in the ball game. That's a facet of Tennessee's game perhaps that will be Condridge a little bit different this year in that Colquitt and Schuler both can pull it down and will run with it without much hesitation. That's true and it also gives an added dimension to the Tennessee offense because they can sprint and get to the wide side of the field without having to run the bootleg. Uh, last year with Andy uh, the one way they got outside was to run the bootleg play. Now they can just come right from under the center and sprint to the field. There's Hutton's kick. Oh man loose football should have never fielded that one. Tennessee's got it. Now that's a facet of the game that Coach Majors would really like. He's a real special teams guy, and that was a great play on special teams. The word on Baggett is he only called for a fair catch about three times last year. This is one time he should have done it. There you see it. The punt was good for 36 yards. Hard to tell who was on the bottom of that when we think Mark Holland. All right, Tennessee with the football. New quarterback. Hand off to Hayden. Not much there. Jerry Colquitt has entered the game at quarterback, so Philip Fulmer true to form there. He said the second uh, couple of series for Schuler and then his number two quarterback would come in, although in reality he is not number two. They're both number one. All right, let's see what Colquitt can do with his team after Tennessee gets a break here. Remember, southwestern Louisiana scored after Tennessee had a pass intercepted. Now the ball is loose on the ground. There's a fight for it. Southwestern may have recovered, and I think they did. Tennessee returns the favor as they turn it over. Let's that take a look like at this one. Just a missed communication. Yes, I, that exactly what happened. Little man Stewart couldn't get a hold of it. Well, I think uh, Jerry hit the elbow of Mario Brunson and didn't get the ball back to the to tailback, and it was just a, a miscommunication between tailback and quarterback. James Pennington was the man who recovered for the Raging Cajuns. So little man Stewart was the intended recipient of the handoff, but I think Condridge hit it on the nose. He Bumped into his fullback. Here's the tailback coming off left tackle. Mosek, and he's not going to find much running room there. Well, Condridge, each man has made a, a mistake early. Maybe they've gotten it out of their system. 
Well, I think what we have to do is, is I hope that at least the fans will do it too, is not focus so much on the two quarterbacks and how they're playing. You got to realize we're dealing with four new offensive linemen that are getting their feet wet also. So it's uh, not so much just the quarterback thing. It's a, it's a whole offensive unit thing. And that's uh, what I think the whole focus should be on right now. Borsak has a tailback. And they try the right side of that line, get up across the 30, maybe to the 32-yard line before the stop is made by Tennessee. Taiwan Hayes, who likes to keep it occasionally. Ben Talley, one of the first men there defensively for Tennessee. Ben Talley, 6'3", 228 pounds, a sophomore from the state of Georgia. An outstanding athlete. Not a lot of experience, but he will be a great one before he leaves Tennessee. All right, here's Hayes looking now at a third and about seven situation. Three to nothing. Southwestern Louisiana is leading. Taiwan Hayes wants to call a timeout. He looked at the defense, didn't like what he had called, matching that up with the defense, I guess, and called a timeout. Yeah, you made a good point, Kendridge. Uh, so much emphasis and perhaps too much has been put on the quarterbacks. When in reality, we got young men like Charlie Garner coming in. You got the young offensive linemen who are people like Bubba Miller and Jeff Smith who are getting a start in there and who are redshirt freshmen. So uh, there are a lot of other people we're dealing with here. That's right. Let's go down to the sidelines for a word from Ted. Ted? Guys, Coach Fulmer, the acting head coach, dragged the offense together, pulled them together and said, don't panic. It's too early. If we execute, we can win. It was Heath Schuler then playing cheerleader saying, let's go, fellas, come on. And they also said they're going to adjust the offensive line blocking to try and get that front side linebacker who's been causing them problems so far. Okay, thank you, Ted. So each of the young quarterbacks has turned it over. Schuler threw an interception, which turned out to be 34 yard drive and stalled and finally a field goal was kicked and it's three to nothing and then Colquitt uh, turned it over when he kind of bobbled a handoff intended for a little man Stewart. All right up to the line of scrimmage come the Cajuns it's a third down and seven. Let's see if Hayes puts it in the air. They would prefer not to but in this case they're going to Hayes dropped. Morris Morris roaring in number 85 6 3 224 pounder take a look at him Condridge I think he's going to be a good one you're looking at power and speed right there I've, I've had the pleasure of watching Horace work out this past year in the offseason and he takes pride in the fact that he's very fast and he's really put on a little weight and he's a very eager talent he's going to be a great one true freshman back to receive Baggett's punch Sean Summers he feels it at the 25. He's to the 30 and across to about the 33 or four yard line before he has stopped. Just a few months ago, he was playing football down the road at Oak Ridge. Here he is tonight before 95,000 fielding a punt, but he did a nice job. There's Jerry Colquitt out in his first series. Things did not go well. In Schuler's first series, things did not go well. That punt, by the way, was good for 52 yards. The return by Summers for eight. So Tennessee now takes over, looks at a first down and 10. Let's see if they can get their offense uncranked right here. Here's Colquitt back to throw. Fires almost intercepted. Threw it a little short. Pennington had a hand on it. Big number 47, a linebacker, but uh, couldn't quite hang on. This ball just needed a little more loft because, if you, as you see, Craig Faulkner is wide open, but you've got to get that ball over the linebackers and drop it into the hole there, and that was just uh, not a great pass. Are they nervous, uh, Condry? I would imagine that they are a little bit nervous, but uh, Coach Fulmer and the coaching staff will only allow them to do things that they can do at this point. And I don't think he's going to put too much pressure on them to make big plays. Colquitt's going to be dropped for a big loss. Just couldn't find a receiver open. And finally, everything just sort of collapsed on him. And William Sims, outside linebacker, 250-pounder, came in to drop him. It's a minus 12. Back it up, 
So Tennessee going in the wrong direction right here trailing southwestern Louisiana by a score of three to nothing as we're in the first quarter of play with a little over five to go and the volunteers looking at a third and 20. Mose Phillips in the backfield now sits out on a wing. Here's the little shuffle pass inside. It's good up across the 30 to about the 32 yard line before the stop is made. And carrying the football was Mose Phillips. Charles Poole made the stop inside linebacker. 5'11", 216 pounder. Not that big for a linebacker, but he filled that one pretty, pretty good. Tom Hutton in punt formation now, and bag it deep to receive. Here's Hutton's kick. It's high, not that deep. It's going to take a southwestern bounce, and Tennessee will have to down it up around the 41 or 42 yard line. So southwestern Louisiana will be in decent field position here, and already leading three to nothing in this football game. So the Tennessee offense unable Conridge to get anything sustained early. One thing we have to look at too is that the best part of this South, Southwestern Louisiana football team is their defense. And they were they were highly touted coming in here. All of their stars are defensive players with the exception of uh, Wade and uh, their quarterback. That Tyron was Hayes. good for only 26 yards. Here's Hayes back being chased gonna be dropped way back to the 32 yard line Todd Kelly. That's a name you'll hear a lot of this year. <laughs> Potential All-American dropped him for a 10 yard loss. Take a look at it here. There's actually good pressure from a lot of people. Reggie Ingram's back there. Shane Bonham's coming in and backing up and I tell you Shane Bonham's play is essential to Todd Kelly having a great year because if he starts to play well and, and he can handle that spot in there, they won't be able to double team TK and that'll be better for him. Here's Hayes on a delay, tried to step inside his tackle position there and got a couple of yards before Tennessee closed it down rather quickly. Reggie Ingram, one of the first men to arrive on the scene along with Willie Richards for Tennessee. Willie Richard started the fall practice at middle linebacker and then was moved to uh, defensive end which I guess means that they're pretty well comfortable with the way Reggie Ingram is playing and the man behind him Jeremy Spivey who I understand has made some pretty good strides in practice uh, this fall. All right Southwestern now is looking at third down and a mile to go here. One running back as you see Taiwan Hayes. Got a little time, rolls, throws. Is it complete? No, incomplete. Had to wait for the official ruling, but he was right on top of it, and apparently there was a trap over there, but it's an incomplete pass. It brings up a punting situation. Intended for Wade Butler. Oh, just ball. knocked loose at the last <laughs> second right there. The reason for the delay is the ball never hit the ground. It was laying on his back. That's he right. Was waiting to see if he's going to turn over and catch it. Davio Henson, who got the start tonight. Session, who had been listed as a starter earlier, has a knee injury. Davio has been around for a while, though, and he knows what to do. He knows how to get to the football. All right, Sean Summers will go back into deep receiving position. And Southwestern will have to punt it away. As neither team showing any offense to speak of early in this ball game. Both uh, making a few mistakes. A nice kick. Summer settles under it at the 21 yard line. Comes straight up the field across the 30 to about the 33 yard line before they close in on him on the special team and knock him down. So Tennessee now will go back on offense once again. And let's see who goes out at quarterback. He's Schuler. Heath Schuler. There you see the yardage situation. Tennessee with a two yard advantage, but uh, the big story, of course, is neither team has been able to do that much. That punt covered 44 yards and a pretty decent return of 12 by Sean Summers. All right, Schuler 
Looks over the defense with five men up on the front. Hands off to the first man through. That's his big pullback, Mario Brunson. Conrad Lewis, the nose guard, drags him down along with William Sims, the outside linebacker. Mario Brunson, uh, Conrad, I would, Conridge, I would guess, is perhaps as strong as anybody physically on this team. He it? is a physical specimen, and he works hard at it, too. He, he was one of those guys that was around this summer and uh, had the opportunity to watch him get ready for the season, and he's a hard worker, and most fullbacks that are good have to be that. A couple of minutes remaining in the quarter. Here's the handoff and the deep eye to the tailback. And Aaron Hayden slashes across midfield into Cajun country down to the 45-yard line. 18-yard run by Aaron Hayden. And Orlando Thomas from safety had to come up and make the stop. Just a great play. Mario Brunson led block that time right to the right side and just annihilated the linebacker. Opened up a gaping hole there. <laughs> well, a great block. Best play for the balls thus far. Here's Schuler looking at the defense, calling his signals, handing off again to Hayden, who cuts outside. Nice cut at the last second. And he moved across the line of scrimmage and down to about the 42-yard line before they make the stop. James Atkins again, that giant tackle, who is projected as an NFL future star, six foot six, 299 pounds. Southwestern Louisiana from Lafayette, Louisiana. Of course, they were interfered with by the storm. Garner is in a tailback now. Charlie Garner. We get our first look at him, maybe. No, Schuler's going to keep it. Turn the corner and get run out of bounds. But a nice play by Heath Schuler down to about the 33-yard line. A little bit, a little bit of a mix up there. We have a. Uh... I think Garner goes the wrong way, but he catches himself, but he made a good play out of a bad one, but uh, you have to do that sometime when you're a young and learning offense. You've just got to do make plays like that. All right, Tennessee with the football now showing some offense as we get late, under a minute to go in the first quarter. Southwestern Louisiana leading in this ball game by a score of three to nothing. Here's Schuler pitching back. Here's Garner trying to get outside. Cuts in, can't find any running room. Just ran out of uh, space over there as the Cajuns closed in on him. About five or six of them, led by Elton Ward, a linebacker. 228-pounder who's 5'11", came roaring up to make the first hit. Well, Garner got a taste of big-time college football right there, Kundridge, but uh, no matter how fast you are, you got to still have a little help from the guys out front. Well, one thing you'll find out very quickly in the Southeastern Conference in this caliber of football, East and West won't get it. You can't run sideways. Everybody has speed and everybody has quickness. You have to run north and south and get up the field. All right, let's go down on the sideline because, uh, again, like I say, he's doing better than he can possibly do, but I, uh, he's going to leave that to his cardiologist, and so am I. Thank you very much. Back upstairs. All right, Schuler rolls down the right. Cuts inside, spins, and not a whole lot there as he gets to maybe the 35-yard line before Jeff Mitchell, outside linebacker on the right side, made the stop. That option was well defense. They, they just had the Tennessee offense outman. They had too many people outside of the pitch man, and there's no way that play was going to work. And he made a proper decision by tucking it up and getting what he could out of a bad play. Third down at 12, Corey Fleming checked in. Corey Fleming is a fine pass receiver. Might look for him on this one, Condridge. The no backs look. I think the Southwestern, no, he did not get back. They threw the flag on him. Catch There's the, the ball. pass. Almost intended for <laughs> the Corey man we called, Fleming. but <laughs> Corey couldn't hang on to it. A little hot on that one, I think, the pass was a little hot. That ball had a little zip on it, folks. And but Corey, Corey makes his catches most of the time, and I, I know he's not going to be satisfied with that because that's a catch that's very catchable for him. Schuler has got an arm. There's no question about that. That ball had a little zip on it. It's Ronald Davis coming out of the ball game. Tennessee shuffling their receivers. 
trying to keep people fresh in there. All right, Schuler has a running back this time. Last time they went with a no set, seventh play of the drive. Let's see what Schuler can do here. It's third down. He needs about seven. Gonna pull it down and get his first down. The flag is down, though. Might be a holding call. It's in that general area, Condridge. You're probably right. But it was such a quick play, you wonder how anyone could hold on one that quick. But that may have been the case. Tennessee kind of retreating, I think, and looking for it, and that's going to be the case. So a good play by Heath Schuler is going to be nullified here by what will probably be a holding penalty. As you see, a little quarterback draw. Holding, yes, right on the left guard, number 71. Got the hand outside of the pad. Once you do that, they're going to call it every time. Well, if it was 70, it was Chris Alston. If it was 71, it was Bubba Miller. It was Bubba, I think. Spivey over the ball. Again, they come with a no back offense. Receivers on both sides. Trips on the right side this time. Schuler's back. Got to test the arm. Fires. Got Faulkner. Faulkner looking for the first down. Got it. Got it. Great play by Craig Faulkner. He's one of the guys that's going to have to step up and be, become a leader and take charge. This is a, just a little eight-yard hitch pattern, but Craig takes it on his own to get the first down, and that's just great effort. Great effort on the part of Craig Faulkner. The safety, Donald Collins, made the stop that time, but not until after Collins, uh, Faulkner had picked up the first down. Schuler looks at the defense. Gives a signal to his receivers on the left side and then throws to the right side. Pretty close to a nine-yard gain. That looked like a checkoff situation. Corey Fleming, yep. He may be checking off to the short side hitch. Let's take a look at some of the first quarter stats you see right there. Rushing. Uh, Tennessee with a decided edge passing neither team burning it up total yardage Tennessee with the advantage turnovers two to one though in a column that uh, Tennessee will not like that's the one column you don't want to win Schuler turns dips to his fullback Mario Brunson Brunson crashes down for first down yardage James Atkins made the stop I'm not sure we're going to see a better defensive tackle than this big kid in here, Condridge. He's a he's a load. So far, he's really proved panning out to be all that he was touted to be. That time, the the defense just came after Tennessee. They they manned up and had everybody in there to stop the run and manned up outside. I think if they do that anymore or with a steady diet, you'll see the ball thrown. All right, it's first down and. In to go for the balls. Here's the handoff to the tailback. And Aaron Hayden crosses the line of scrimmage, gets down inside the 10 yard line to about the eight. University of Southwestern Louisiana leading in this ball game, three to nothing, but the balls are threatening. That was a good stop by Orlando Thomas. I got your name right this time. I had a little basketball flashback when I said Orlando Berry. Wrong, <laughs> wrong sport, wrong sport. Great play by Orlando Thomas. Aaron Hayden on nine attempts now has got 41 yards. So he's off to a good start. 41 yards for Aaron Hayden already, and we've got 12.02 to go in this. Schuler drops the football, but I think recovered it himself, but flags are going to fall everywhere. Could have been a false start, maybe. You might, I think this one might be on the quarterback. Legal procedure. Got out of there a little bit fast. He'll get the call. We have a snap in front of the against the center. Still second down. Well, Condridge, that's part of the first game jitters, I guess. That's part of being young. Just came out a little bit too fast, and uh, with all that's going on, he might have forgotten the snap count on that one. Ryan Spivey's the center. Spivey's a veteran, of course. Here's Schuler back. 
Got to test that arm in the end zone. Touchdown, Corey Fleming. Covered 14 yards. Schuler laid it on the line. Fleming brought it in beautifully. Now we'll have the drive of the extra point. Lance Sweeten will be holding. John Bexforth will do the kicking. It's up. It is good. Tennessee takes the lead with 11.37 remaining in the first half. The Volunteers go on top 7-3 to three on the Heath Schuler 14-yard pass. Now this is how it's supposed to work. Little drop back, little seam pass. The ball has to be thrown with some mustard on it right in front of the safety and over the head of the defender. Great execution by Heath Schuler. Great execution by Corey Fleming. Good pass. Look at the offensive lineman giving him all the time that he needs, and that's essential. When a great play works, everybody does their job, from offensive lineman all the way to the receivers and the quarterback. And this was a great play. Well, as far as passing is concerned, now if you're keeping up with the two, Schuler's got 41 yards through the air and Colquitt 11. But the uh, truth of the matter is, Schuler has played more here in the first half. Jerry will be back with his shot shortly. Probably the next time Tennessee goes on offense, Colquitt will get the shot. Mexford will be kicking off now. Southwestern Louisiana now will go on offense and see what they can do. So far, the Tennessee defense has been very, very good. Remember, Southwest scored after Schuler threw an interception and they had a short ways to go for their field goal. 11 plays that covered 67 yards took 551 and was completed with a 14 yard pass from Schuler to Corey Fleming. Here's the kick. All the way to the goal line. Bang. yards on the return that's all yeah, you see him trying to come out of there boy the special teams play there Condridge all over the all Jack Jacobic just was played the perfect wedge buster right there it takes a lot of courage to go down there and throw your body in front of that first wave of blockers and Jack Jacobic just did that and allowed for a, a great special teams play Victor Brown was also in on that all right, here's Taiwan Hayes heading off to his tailback. Nothing. Mozek is dropped. Jeff Tullis, first man through. George Kidd also in on it. A redshirt freshman. Let's go down to Ted Hall on the sidelines. Ted? Bob, I'm on the sideline of the Raging Cajuns, where obviously it's like someone popped their balloon, but these guys still have a lot of air left, if you don't mind some corny lines like that. They said this is their chance of a lifetime. They're not going to let it slip away. They're not going to let this slip away from them. It's a big opportunity to play a top-ranked powerhouse, and the Raging Cajuns want to control the ball here and get back in the game. Okay, thank you very much, Ted. Here is Taiwan Hayes, not exactly happy with his setup, moving his men around, hands off to his tailback, trying to come outside. A little bit of running room, but then Tennessee closes down. Reggie Ingram closing down on the tailback, Mozek, without much gained on that one. Ingram has picked up some weight in the offseason. He's up around 245, Kundrich. Yes, he has, and he, he realized last year that this was his opportunity to come through and contribute, and I think that's what a lot of the defensive players this year have done. A lot of them stayed in the summer, stayed over and worked out hard, and they knew that being young was going to be a factor, but they could overcome that by being in shape and ready to play. On third down conversions, Southwestern is only one of four. Let's see what they can do right here. Here is Hayes nailed. George Kidd dropped him. Got a flag on the play. Is it on Tennessee or is I it think on it's, Southwest? It's against Southwest Louisiana. Holding. 
That is the indication, at least the indication it's against the Cajuns, the Ragin' Cajuns. George Kidd is 6'1", 205 pounds, Condridge. That's probably too small for a linebacker, but when you're quick and a good athlete like that, you can overcome the size. All right, they're back in punt formation now. The Cajuns and Sean Summers drops deep. He's standing back at about his own 42-yard line. The snap, it's clean, and it's a nice kick. Summers waiting. Signals for and makes a fair catch at the 49-yard line. Hey, Coach John Majors will like that. He caught the football. Don't ever let it hit the ground. I don't know how many times <laughs> I've been at practice and if you want to get Coach Majors upset, you let that ball bounce around. That's that's a very intelligent play right there, and it's going to help your team. You don't let it bounce around on the ground and lose yardage. That's good special teams play right there. Coach Majors enjoy that. All right, Tennessee takes over, and Heath Schuler remains at quarterback. Well, I think once you get the motor running, you don't want to turn it off. And, they, and they, that was an impressive drive, and it was their first drive, and I think they're just going to let it flow from here and see how they go. Schuler's hit three out of five now. Oh, we got a big yards. touchdown here. There it is. It's a big touchdown here. Yeah. It's a big one. <laughs> Craig Bucker. 51 yards. You saw the arm of Schuler, the speed of Buckner. An old quarterback called that one two seconds into it. Way to go, Condridge. Next fourth kick is up. It is good. And the balls go on top 14 to 3. Well, the fans have been waiting for the Schuler arm. And they saw it big time. This is a great executed play. It started out as an option, but what we can't see is the fake that Faulkner put on the defensive back. He went out like he was going to block him. And when the, when the defensive back saw block, he came up to engage because it, it was an option fake. And then Faulkner just ran right by him, and that's when I saw it. And I just, the only thing that happened there is drop it, and uh, Craig doesn't drop too many. I knew it wasn't going to be short because that he can really get it out there. So... That's a good play, just a perfectly executed football play. I think that motor's starting to run a little bit. They've started the engine, and I think it's starting to roll a little bit. Tennessee's offense appears to be getting in sync. Uh, certainly had looked it on that one in complete sync. There's Jerry Colquitt on the sideline. There's Heath Schuler talking with him. Actually, as we talked in the pregame, these two guys, although they're fierce competitors, are actually very close friends. They sure are, and it's the one thing about them, they both understand, it, and they just have to realize, whenever you start, that's when you're the star. I mean, you, when you go into play, that's when you start. You just have to take it for what it's worth and just go after that common goal, which is winning football games. Joey Chapman is going to kick off. Joey Chapman from Franklin, Tennessee, gets a lot of foot into it. Down to about the three-yard line. And that's all. Victor Brown. Tory Victor Williams Brown. brought it out of there. Victor Brown, there's a Sunday afternoon player. You better believe it. He took on, not only did he play wedge buster, but he made the tackle also. That was a great special teams play. There you see Tennessee scoring drive. One play, 51 yards, eight seconds. That's the kind you like to see if you're on the Tennessee side. If you're on Nelson Stokely's side, that turns out to be a nightmare. All right, Taiwan Hayes. This is not a team that will quit. You can bet on that. The Cajuns come back with their tailback. Most seconds, nothing. Tennessee's J.J. Surlis along with George Kidd in on that one. It's good to see J.J. out there playing because he was really suffering with some arthritic knees, condi knee condition, and uh, 
good to see he's overcome that and uh, he's out there playing, giving it his great effort. They give him a yard on it, make it second down and nine. Bozak now has run six times for a total of 11 yards. He's deep in the eye, everybody else spread out. They handed to him nothing but. Tennessee closes it down again. Paul Yetkowski and Willie Richards leading it. A telling stat there. Paul Yetkowski is an interesting, interesting fellow. He's from Winnipeg, Manitoba. I was very familiar with that area. I've been up there a lot of years. I had a, little, a lot of good times talking to him about Winnipeg and things that go on in Canada. He's going to be a great player around here if he keeps up his work habits. But you go up there on a winter vacation sometimes, Scott. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, the wave had started, my friends. Here's Hayes back to throw. Throws the little shuffle in the middle. Tennessee smelled it out pretty good. Wade Butler came from wide receiver to take the little inside pitch. Tennessee wasn't fooled that much on it as Ben Talley was one of the first men to close down on him. And it brings up a punting situation. I think Southwest Louisiana understands for them to get back in this game and do anything on offense, they've got to get the ball in Wade Butler's hands. And they're not throwing it right now, so they tried a little shovel pass with, with Wade coming in motion from the wide receiver position. Randy Baggett is in punt formation. Sean Summers back uh, to receive. Baggett averaged about 38 yards a kick last year. He gets off one that may be returnable. Here's Summers looking for the outside. Not much running room there. But what you like about this youngster is he catches the football and he holds on to it. Let's go down to Ted Hall on the sidelines. Guys, we got a news flash, a genuine bulletin. Heath Schuler told me on the sidelines he's got his confidence. Now it's Craig Colquitt's chance to earn it as he comes back into play. Jerry Colquitt's turn to Greg, grab that as he comes back into play. All right, thank you, Ted. That punt was good for 39 yards, the return for two. Colquitt re-enters the game now. He's six foot four, 190. Schuler six three, 208. So a couple of pretty big quarterbacks. And the number three man, the freshman Helton, is in that same weight and height range as well. Here's Colquitt back to throw out in the flat, complete to Corey Fleming. Fleming spins across the 45 to about the 47 and kind of falls down at that point. That's Terry Washington down. Uh, that's one way that you slow down the rush. You call your quick game and give your offensive lineman a chance to chop people. When they're, when they're peeing off and coming at you a little bit too much, you just call that quick game. Offensive linemen love that because it's not many people are going to really rush the passer when you're putting that helmet on their knees. In SEC play today, Citadel beat Arkansas on a, a shocker, 10 to 3. Texas A&M defeated LSU, 31 to 22. Alabama, 25. Vanderbilt, 8. Clemson beat Ball State, 24 to 10. Southern Miss upset Memphis State. Memphis State had been favored by a touchdown. Southern Miss won it, 23 to 21. Nebraska beat Utah 49 to 22. Colorado beat Colorado State 37 to 17. California defeated San Jose 46 to 16. Those are some of the games. Boston College 37, Rutgers 20. Mississippi State tonight leading Texas uh, early in that ball game 7 to nothing. There's Nelson Stokely. He has faced the Vols twice, but not as a head coach. This is the first ever meeting between these two. Nelson, as a player at LSU, as a quarterback in the 60s, lost to Tennessee here 17 to 14. And later, as an assistant at LSU, he lost to the Vols in the Blue Bonnet Bowl. But it's the first meeting between the two. Big Mario Brunson! Orlando Thomas had to drag him down from safety as Mario got up a head of steam that time. 23 yards. They're going to the no huddle offense, which is a good change of pace. That's one way of mixing things up. You cannot, not only do you have to do it with play calling, but you can do it by implementing the hurry up offense. It doesn't allow 
Southwestern Louisiana to make their normal calls on defense. We got a holding penalty. Flag down on the play. Little man Stewart, James Stewart, carrying from tailback on the handoff from Colquitt, but a flag was dropped right at the line of scrimmage. John Wolf, linebacker on the left side, made the stop. Most of the southwestern linebackers are rather small. They're in that 5'11", six-foot range. But they've got decent foot, foot speed. Well, hard to spot it that there, was Connor. tough, but the, from the conversation that I saw on the field, they were talking to Bubba Miller again, so that could be. You just never know. But I didn't see it. Didn't see it on that replay. Here's Con uh, Jerry Colquitt at, at the helm this time. Tennessee's been penalized three times for 26 yards now. And off to the tailback. Big hole. Look at Stuart Rambo. Touchdown. Touchdown. Nope, we got a penalty. Flag is down at the 10-yard line. Is it a clip? That's what you look for when it's in that general area. If they call clipping, it was very questionable because the defensive man really turned his back. But uh, if that's what they saw, then... Blocking in the back is what they call it. But the well, defensive man did turn around. Turn around. I saw that one. That nullifies a very, very good run by James Littleman Stewart for what appeared to be a touchdown, but the penalty is going to bring it back. And it's, of course, a big one. Stepped all the way back to the 21-yard line, so... That might be... that. Right there, that's the closest I saw, but like I said, the defensive man did turn his back. That was Horn downfield trying to throw the block, but I don't think that was it. If it was, uh, might want to argue a little on that one. Here's Stewart trying the other side. Not much happening for a little man on that side as he's dropped just inside the 20-yard line. Five minutes, 57 seconds remaining in the first half of play here in Knoxville before a full house of 95,000. The Volunteers of Tennessee leading the Ragin' Cajuns of USL by a score of 14 to 3. Quarterbacks have been alternating. Schuler terribly impressive the last time out. And Colquitt trying to move his team down this time. There's a nice pass out in the flat complete down to the 11-yard line. David Horn, the tight end. Jerry showed great patience there. They were in a cover two scheme, which takes away your outside receivers. He went underneath because their linebackers are really trying to get deep and help their two top men on the on the coverage. And Jerry just was patient, went to his underneath guy, and that's what you've got to do. When they drop off like that, you've got to take the underneath man and just don't get too impatient. Tennessee not noted for throwing a whole lot to the tight end, but when they do, it's often pretty effective. Here's the handoff to the tailback. Stewart, he crosses the 10 down to about, should have gotten the first down as he crossed the 10-yard line to the nine. Conrad Lewis, the nose guard, 5'11", 239 at the bottom. Also outside linebacker Mark LeBlanc was in on the tackle. First down and 10 to go, first and goal to go actually for the balls, nine yards away. Colquitt calling his signals, turns, hands off to uh, is that Mose Phillips. Mose Phillips running out of tailback that time. Picked up a little uh, yardage as he got down to about the six yard line. Mose Phillips, a valuable player, Condridge. He can play fullback, he can play tailback. And uh, when you go through the course of the season and you think about what can happen to running backs injury wise, he becomes a very valuable man. Not only that, he also is a great little receiver coming out of the backfield, too, and that, that adds a lot to his. We might have another six here. Oh, that was a little. That was a great defensive play. Yeah, fade in the end zone for Fleming. 
little bit out of his reach and it was covered very well. Just a simple three-step drop and a little fade. Greg Roberts was the defender that time. Timing play in the ball. Torrey almost makes a great catch, but the ball was a little bit thrown a little bit inside. You got to keep that ball outside over the outside shoulder, but uh, it'll come. It'll come. All right, Tennessee looking at a third down now and seventh situation, third and goal at the seventh. Tennessee experimenting. This is the fourth different tailback they have used. Mose Phillips is there now. Colquitt is back to throw. Fires it out there. Let Faulkner a little too far, but he was pretty well covered anyway. I'm not sure he could have scored had he caught the football, but we're going to look now at perhaps a uh, field goal here. That was a dangerous throw. <laughs> that was dangerous. Last year, uh, John Bexforth hit 15 of 21. Let's see what he does right here. Wheaton will be holding. Ball is going to be spotted at about the 14-yard line, 24 yards. It's up there. It is good. So the Volunteers go on top by a score of 17 to 3 here on a hot, muggy night in Knoxville. Tennessee got off to a very slow start tonight. Each of the young quarterbacks making a mistake early in the ball game. Colquitt fumbled on a handoff, attempted handoff. Schuler threw a pass interception, but hey, Condridge, both of them to me appear to be settling down real well. I think they are, and I think the, the offensive linemen are settling down. I think what you have to look at the overall scope is uh, their offensive line is very young, and they before anything happens to them as an offensive team, that offensive line has got to jail. And I think you're starting to see that because you're not seeing a lot of penalties. You're seeing a lot of running plays with holes, just gaping holes. I mean, that, that's a sign that they are getting their confidence in, back and, and they're getting together as a unit. Well, there you saw the Tennessee cheerleaders with 17 push-ups. Uh, Fulmer sees that. Uh, he might toss a cup up into the offensive line there. That's, <laughs> people look like they were in pretty good shape. The official attendance tonight, 95,110. 95,110, the largest crowd that USL has played before, although they played at Auburn and a few other places like that. Later on this year, they will take on Auburn. They will also play the University of Houston later this year. Here's the kick. Down to the goal line, actually a half a step into the end zone. Good night. Tennessee really converged on that one. Victor Brown, the wedge buster. Boy, <laughs> and he likes it too. I mean, just he gets excited about that. And Darren <laughs> Billings, let's take a look. There he is. Jacobic and Victor Brown. Jacobic who has been banged up a little bit this year in practice and uh, doesn't show any signs of it. That's special teams play. A couple of more like that. He and Victor are going to be captains of the specialty team. I think that brings a smile to Coach Major's face. That last drive, 10 plays, covered 52 yards. Came with 337 remaining on the clock and nothing doing there on that one. Tennessee's defense as this ball game progresses, Condridge is Beginning, I think, to look uh, looked like a pretty cohesive unit. Look at the rushing yardage. Tennessee 112, USL 3. All right. The Cajuns come up to the line of scrimmage from Lafayette, Louisiana, the Ragin' Cajuns. Ole Miss leading Auburn 21 to 7 tonight. That brought a stir from the crowd here. Here's Mosek trying to go outside and got a little bit of running room before he is knocked down. The official signals a Tennessee timeout here. Volunteers call a timeout. Get a little. Uh, Advice from the sidelines, and I'm sure on this hot, humid night to get a, a little liquid refreshment, too. 
not only that, but I think it's good clock management by the coaching staff, too, because now with 2.52 left, third down, they stop them. They'll get a free timeout, the two-minute warning, and uh, give them a little more time. Put the ball in the We've got two minutes and 52 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Tennessee leading 17 to three over the region Cajuns. Tennessee goes on the road next week for a Southeastern Conference matchup with Georgia. Then Florida comes in here, followed by Cincinnati. Just the first game, long season ahead. Tennessee and South. Western Louisiana hoping for success in 92. The Cajuns were able to win only a couple of games last year. They changed their offense more from an option to a multiple offense, trying to generate a little something more since they were able to average only 13 points a game last year. So far, Tennessee has shut them down, though. Here's the pitch wide. They try to get outside, and a little bit of running room is picked up by Isaac Benefield, who has come in at tailback number 32, 5'10", sophomore. Running second to uh, Steve Mosek, but expected to play a lot tonight. Tracy Smith from right cornerback was the man who made the stop that time. There's a young fan enjoying the atmosphere and the score, obviously, judging from the color of his shirt there orange and white it's a good look at Taiwan Hayes Hayes pitches back to his tailback who turns the corner and that's Isaac Benefield again and he gets up across the 30 yard line to about no way to see where they pull it down at the 32 Isaac Benefield showing uh, perhaps a little more speed outside than the, the starter Steve Mosek who was running primarily inside. So it becomes now a second and third situation. Tennessee defensively will probably be looking for run here. Three yards shy of a first. Here's Hayes handing off, faking a handoff, throwing a long deep pass way over everybody. Closest fan to it was the Tennessee defender downfield that was Victor Brown and it was way over Victor's head. <laughs> Victor didn't have a shot at that one. No, the, that was thrown away or a very poor pass. One of I think he was just getting rid of that one. He's getting a little pressure. Now it becomes third and three. I may have said third on the previous. Third down and three now for the Ragin Cajuns. 235 remaining in the first half, here's Hayes. Two back offense, pitches to Benefield, his tailback who turns the corner and gets pretty close to the first down, may have gotten it. Edgy Ingram was the first man to hit him, 6'2", 250 pound junior. No, they say he did not make it. Just a little pitch to the short side of the field. Victor oh, Brown, that's, that's a little close. a little slow getting up there. There's Ingram, number 41. Big Reggie from Memphis, Tennessee. Came in with a lot of high credentials when he was drafted uh, or signed, we should say, out of high school. And he's finally living up to uh, the high praise that uh, we had heard about him. Maggot has had three punts, 42-yard average. His longest has been 52, so he's done a decent job. He gets a high snap and had to hurry it. Summers gathers it in, looks for some running room, and did a pretty decent job getting back to the 39-yard line. Volunteers will take over with 222 remaining in the first half, leading 17 to three over southwestern Louisiana. And Colquitt is going to be in at quarterback. That punt was for 36 yards. The return, nine yards. Southwestern Louisiana really 
did the Tennessee team a favor by running the ball to the short side of the field and running out of bounds and throwing an incomplete pass. Uh, the clock was at 2.52, and it's still at 2.22, and Tennessee has a lot of time to put the ball in the end zone. Let's see if Colquitt will go to the air or stay on the ground. He rolls, looks, pulls it down. Nice running by Jerry Colquitt up to the 48-yard line. Elton Ward from linebacker chased him down. Tennessee going with a no huddle offense here. Clock running. It just went under the two minute mark. Now Colquitt has to spend a timeout. That's the problem with the no huddle sometimes. Right. It just doesn't uh, the message get to everyone. That's true. Bob, you got to keep me on on what game we're talking about here. I'm talking about a two-minute warning. That's a professional thing. <laughs> well, you gotta, gotta slap me a little bit every once in a while. I get carried sense, away. <laughs> in a sense, it works out that way here. Yeah. There no you, way. There you see the wave. Well, you know the football season is here, folks. Here it comes, right in front of us. in Knoxville tonight. Conrich coach Johnny Majors has always said and a lot of other coaches too that the biggest improvement a team makes is between the first and the second game of the season. If that's the case. Uh, if Tennessee makes a lot of improvement here I think things are going to look very good for the ball. Well that's true and I They'll continue to improve, and I think that's the way they, they've approached this thing, and they knew they were coming in with a young bunch, a bunch that was inexperienced, and, you know, they lost the bulk of, of their talent last year. I mean, they, they had nine guys in the draft the year before. I think it was eight, and, you know, when you lose talent like that, you, it, to replace them is tough. And you got to start with young players. You saw Aaron Hayden pick up the first down that time. Here is a delay in the middle to the tail back down to the 40-yard line. Schuler four of five now for 91 yards. Colt with three of six for 21 yards. Hayden has run the ball 10 times for 49 yards. Clock still running with a minute 22 to go. Tennessee leading 17 to three. Would probably like to at least get a field goal here. Here's Colquitt swings one out of the flat. Good yardage. Aaron Hayden cuts back. Look out, yeah. Forty yards for Aaron Hayden. Some of it, he got a block or two at the line, Gondridge, but most of it was on his own when he got in the secondary. That's vintage Eric, Aaron Hayden. He's, a, he's a, a nifty, shifty type runner. He's not going to, you're not going to see him have many 90-yard, 80-yard sprints in his career, but when it gets to moving and, and following a blocking scheme and, and running where the daylight is, that's what he does best. And it was exemplified right there on that run. There's John Bexport. Extra point out of the hold of Lance Wheaton. And Tennessee goes on top 24 to 3 with a minute 5 remaining. Take a look at the replay here, Condridge, and I think we're going to see some sensational moves by Hayden when he gets in the secondary. You watch. Jerry does a great job of looking off the receiver, getting the, getting the deep, giving the defense a chance to drop back into their coverage, and then you dump it off to a running back. And I'm sure it looked like they thought he was just going to run out of bounds and stop the clock. But Good there's block that there. Shifty. There's that shiftiness I'm talking about. He has an uncanny ability to just see where people are, cut back into the flow, and, and, and utilize his blockers. I mean, Man. right here, they probably, see, they thought he was going to just run out of bounds, but not not Aaron. <laughs> Good block right there. And then Moe's Phillips it right there. Little dump off and 
There you go. Number nine. J.J. McCleskey yeah. the block. J.J. Down, down there's Mose, number 19, throwing a good block. That's a team effort. Six points. 24 to three, Tennessee on the big end. There's Aaron Hayden, four plays, 61 yards, as you see. Gonna be Joey Chapman kicking off. Steps into it. High, take it on the four yard line. Oh my. There's that man again. <laughs> Victor Brown. And Jacobic went down and busted the wall again. These guys enjoy that. Wade Butler returning the kick. Take a look There's at Jacobic. Jacobic taking out. And here comes the hit. Pow. You got to like that. You got to admire Wade Butler for holding on to that football. That was close to a D cleater there, Bob. <laughs> Almost. Apparently there was a flag down and it is against USL. Illegal block on the return, we suppose. They step it off here. So with only a minute to go, USF, USL will probably be a little conservative, I would think, with their backs to the wall here, Kendrich. Well, let's, they do what they, what they did last time, running to the short side of the field and getting out of bounds. Tennessee could. No, they're not doing that this time. They're just going to run the clock out, it looks like. And nothing in the middle for the That's tailback, good. Steve Mosek. Stacked up by everybody in the center of the Tennessee line. And the clock continues to run with 45 seconds to go. James Wilson was one of the men in on that tackle. Big James is 6'3", 253. Handoff once again out of the deep eye to the tailback Mosek and nothing doing there. As USL is content to run this clock out, not take a chance with the ball that deep in their own territory and trailing. All right. Hayes puts Butler in motion to the top of your screen and he rolls in that direction. Being chased, being hit, and did he I think he caught it? Nope. That stops the clock with five seconds to go. A little juggling over there. I have to admit, I don't understand that play. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they just want Tennessee to get another opportunity. Well, that's exactly what it turned out to be. Had he wow. run the ball, it could have run the clock out. And uh, we would have gone into halftime. As it is, he gives this youngster, Sean Summers, a true freshman from Oak Ridge a right, chance Bob. to return it. Bob, do you rush him and block it or do you set up the wall? I say set up the wall. Set up the wall and run it back. <laughs> and so they went after it. <laughs> it's a good kick. Well, Sean Summers just stepped away from it and Baggett's kick's going to wind up to be about a 90 yarder. <laughs> it rolls down to the six yard line. So that's the 79 yards to be exact was the punt 79. That'll help his average tremendously. It's halftime going around and here's the kick and it's high and deep. Settling down at the seven yard line. Pretty good return here and finally spun down around the 28 yard line. Dash on the return. 18 uh, yards on that one. Harold Nash was the man on the return. And Jesse Sanders credited with the tackle. So we start the second half of play. Tennessee on the big end. Their defense dominating in the first half. Their young quarterbacks both being impressive. Tailbacks, Hayden especially, very impressive. And everyone on defense playing well. Tawan Hayes turns, gives off to Mosek, his tailback, who spins off his left guard and tackle. 
And he crosses the 25 to the 27 yard line. Before the stop is made by Todd Kelly. There you see big number 58 filling up your screen. One of the leaders and uh, Condridge, he's got to be not only a good player, but a leader this year on that young defense. He sure does. And what he just, the play he just made exemplifies how technique conscious he is. You know, he kept it, kept his arm free and made the tackle even though he was engaged with the tackle. And that's, uh, that's the way you write it up. That's the way you want to do it. By the way, the tailback, Mosak has had 10 carries for 28 yards. Yeah, jam up again. Shane Bonham. Legend at the intersection. Shane Bonham, he's, as we mentioned earlier, he's the guy that's gonna have to step it up and he engages and just foils this option attempt. And uh, when he plays well, number 58 is gonna be that much better. Shane Bonham is 6'4". Weighs about 270 pounds, a junior. Came to Tennessee without a scholarship. Didn't take long to give him one, though. That, ah, oh, that, they call a face mask, and they, he had the back of his helmet. Yeah, he did. That uh, replay, I think, clearly indicated that. Take another look at it here, Condridge. Now it is See? the back of the helmet. Yeah, the back of the Didn't helmet. Didn't even have anything close to the face mask. But the official didn't see it that way. So it's against Tennessee. Five yarder, Mosek trying to go outside. Boy, do they converge on him quickly. Tennessee running to the football quite well, hitting the charge George Kidd. It becomes now a third down situation for the Ragin' Cajuns. Third down and three. We're pretty early in the second half of play. If you just joined us, Tennessee is leading 24 to three. Southwest got on the scoreboard first. Southwestern Louisiana from Lafayette. They're two of seven and third down conversions and no, nothing happening there. George Kidd once again. Tell you what, this youngster has the potential to be a truly outstanding player. He's got foot speed, and he's got instinct. Take a look at him closing down here. Well, that puts Baggett back in punt formation, and Sean Summers back to receive. Baggett's last kick was for 79 yards. This one will be fielded by Summers at the 28, running laterally. Trying to find running room, gets up the sideline. <laughs> Almost got the break he needed, almost but not got quite. To, yeah. Almost got to his wall. Hey, that defensive team, that uh, enthusiasm is getting a little bit catching. They're all jumping around, slapping each other. They're starting to. Here's the return, and almost got to the wall. Just ran out of room a little bit, but he'll break one before the year's over. Punt was for 42 yards. The return was for seven. Russ Berry spotting for us tonight. Earl Anderson over here on the stats, keeping us informed. Here is handoff by Schuler into the middle, and it is Mario Brunson picking up a yard or so, and that's about it. There's Big Mario, number 44, came to Tennessee as a linebacker, but wound up at fullback. And with his blocking ability and strength, that's where Mario will remain. <laughs> well, after the departure of uh, Amsler and Poles, they needed another power fullback, and Mario switched over, and he's done a great job. Heath Schuler starting at quarterback here in the second half. Pitches wide. Look out. Here's Garner spinning and spinning and trying to get running room. He got across the 45 to about the 48. James Atkins. Big tackle who weighs almost 300 pounds chased him down. Number 30 is Charlie Garner. Quick, quick feet. Play went for nine yards. Here's something that you just don't coach. You either got this or you don't. That cut it back to building. And that's something that he has. He can do that very well. Good feet. Well, folks, there's a little taste of the Garner style that's arrived at Tennessee. Heath Schuler, long count. 
Gives it back to his tailback. There he goes again down to the 40 yard line. William Sims outside linebacker chased him down 12 more yards for Charlie Garner. The offensive line blocking scheme is starting to gel a little bit. Those guys are getting a little more comfortable. You know, they're blocking, double teaming, slipping off, and doing the things that they're supposed to do, and I think they're settling down. And when that happens, gaping holes happen, and running, running backs can get through. He's carried it four times now for 21 yards. Charlie Garner in this ball game. Here's Schuler standing up, firing. Ooh, it's complete, but boy, was that a dangerous throw. Well, that's something that uh, this year will happen and last year just probably wouldn't have happened. Uh, Andy Kelly wouldn't have, wouldn't have attempted that pass. But now if the Tennessee team is on either hash, they can still throw the ball to the field because you've got two guys that have got good little rifle. That was Kendrick Jones on the receiving end. His first reception of the night. He's a man who's gone from offense to defense back and forth. Settling in at offense now. Here they snap it off again. Schuler over there to Ronald Davis. Davis is out of bounds. But another first down for the Vols. Crowd, I think, thought there might have been a little extra hitting over there. The ball is pulled into the 25-yard line. You Just a quick three-step drop and a hit. And if Tennessee wants to do that the rest of the game, they can. They haven't stopped it yet. And what they're going to force them to do is roll up the coverage. And they, they're still not doing it. They're still playing straight up and if they want to throw that hitch they can do it they're starting to move the linebacker out a little bit now for this series though here's Schuler gunning it over on the right side this time nice move like I said he's not afraid to throw it from the hash and to the field because he knows was, he can get it there Kendrick Jones in there Condridge yeah that's uh that's some arm strength that uh you've heard about from that gentleman Heath Schuler <laughs> He's a sophomore, of course. Jerry Colquitt is also a sophomore. So Tennessee's quarterbacking in the future seems to be in very, very good hands. Also with the youngster Todd Helton coming along. There's a stumble in the middle. and <laughs> still great yardage. James Stewart, little man stumbled and it looked like he would go down behind the line of scrimmage and he wound up turning it into a nice play. Well, i tell you what those two pass plays have done. They forced Southwestern Louisiana to roll up their coverage. They were playing man coverage and a little bit of zone to the field before, but the fact that he Shuler can throw that hitch pattern to the wide side of the field has made them roll it up. It's second down. They need about five for a first. They need nine for a touchdown. Shuler directing the attack. Hands it off to Charlie or to Kenneth Campbell it is. Running out of fullback this time, number 29. There he yes. is. Keep your eyes open. That's a touchdown if you just keep your head up. <laughs> You'll see that in the film. They'll go over that one. There's the rushing yardage. Tennessee rolling it up. Now they're inside the five-yard line. Need about a yard for a first, four for a touchdown. Third down. Campbell at fullback. Like Garner at no, it is little man Stewart at tailback. Now Heath Schuler calls the timeout and comes over to the sidelines to talk with uh, the coaches over there. They'd like to punch it on in here rather than settle for a field goal, of course. Right now, Tennessee's on the big end of a score of 24 to 3. Well, that was a great timeout. They only had 10 men on the field. Ooh. So. <laughs> First quarter tonight, Miami leading Iowa by a score of one to nothing. We'll try to catch you up to date as we go along with some of the scores. Let's go down to Ted on the sidelines during this timeout. Ted? There's a good omen here for Tennessee fans. As you can see, John Ward is in the booth, and that's good news for Tennessee fans who've grown up listening to him. He, of course, had a pacemaker inserted in his heart. There was concern that he might not be able, he's the one with the blue towel around his neck. He always wears that towel. There was some concern that he wouldn't be able to call the game or do the coaches show. In fact, they asked Bob Kessling from Channel 10 in Knoxville if he'd be able to fill in just in case. Ward said, I won't have any of that. Randy Smith is helping out on the on the Vol Network, and John Ward is going through the game. And I actually I talked to some fans who were listening to the game on the radio. They said he sounds as good as new. That's great news. 
Here's a handoff, a spin for maybe the first down. Should be the first down. James Littleman Stewart spun as he went into the line of scrimmage, and I think the twisting motion got him that uh, first down. Mose Phillips is coming out. Aaron Hayden is going in. Substituted tailback for the volunteers. Full house backfield this time, Condridge. Touchdown. It appears that Mario Brunson is in, or is he? Did they not give it to him? They haven't signaled anything. <laughs> Apparently not. Apparently he's an inch or so short. Well, you see it there. It's no more than a foot. Let's take a look at it from ground level. Hard to see where the goal line is in that mass of humanity, but uh, Mario was certainly knocking on the door. It's second and goal. No doubt about this one. In there this time. Mario Brunson in for the touchdown. Big fullback crashes into the checkerboard end zone, and the Volunteers increase their lead to 30 to three. There's big Mario Brunson, seven carries, 36 yards, and a lot of good blocking, as Condridge pointed out on a couple of our replays tonight. He has been very instrumental in some terrific uh, blocks. John Bexport will kick the extra point. Lance Wheaton holds. It's down. It's up. It is good. So with 8.02 remaining in the third quarter of play, Tennessee increases the lead to 31 to three over the University of Southwestern Louisiana. Take a look at the replay here, Condridge, and we'll see just, I guess, plain old power football. Yes, power, power. Good, good offensive surge. You can see the white jerseys are being knocked back, and once you do that on the goal line, it's just, you don't see you see one little helmet sticking out, but the rest of them are back, so they're in the end zone. That's a, that's just good power football. Tonight, Hayden has rushed the ball 10 times for 50 yards, Stewart six times for 36, Garner four times for 21. Last year, Stewart uh, averaged 4.9, 977 yards. Hayden had 726 yards and averaged 4.9. So with the addition of Garner in there, and with Brunson running well at fullback, Tennessee's backfield probably overall, when you take a look at everything, uh, Condridge second to none in the SEC as far as talent and depth is concerned. They've got three good ones, and, and Mario is the key to all of them being successful. All right, Tennessee will be kicking off now. The Volunteers leading 31-3 to with 8.02 remaining in the third quarter of play. The crowd tonight, 95,110 at Big Nealon. Here's Chapman kicking off. It's deep all the way to the goal line. Coming out of there is Wade Butler. Not much room for Wade. He gets it up to about the 16-yard line. And that's where the stop is made by Jacobic. Mr. Jacobic. All right, let's uh, take a look at some other scores tonight. Mississippi 21 to 7 over Auburn in the third quarter. Georgia, look at that one. South Carolina, but that's first quarter. Carolina leading. Kentucky trailing Central Michigan in the first, 3 to nothing. Texas AM beat LSU in Baton Rouge, 31 to 22 today. Mississippi State is leading Texas in the second quarter tonight, 13 to 7. Now back to the action here. As Tawan Hayes rolls to his right, looks for some running room, and gets a little bit of it up to close to the 20-yard line before Jeff Tullis made the stop. Big number 38 there, Tullis, 6'1", 261-pound senior. In that last drive, Tennessee 11 plays, 63 yards. It consumed 4 minutes and 30 seconds. And was capped by the Brunson touchdown. Ball is pulled back and spotted closer, as you see, to the 19-yard line, where it becomes a second down and seven. So 
Let's see what the Cajuns have in mind right here. USL gets the flag, first of all, in the backfield. Here's the pass downfield incomplete. But a flag is down on the play, which in the backfield might have been legal motion. motion. We'll take a look at a replay here, and perhaps we'll pick it up in a second. Here's the call by the official. Yeah, pretty obvious yep. movement. <laughs> a little quick. 31 to 3, Tennessee leading 7.08 remaining. There are the penalty situation tonight. Tennessee still leading in that category. Here's Hayes back. Little shuffle pass. I think that'll go as an incomplete pass. We'll, we'll wait and see. It's an incomplete pass, is it not, Condridge? It's an incomplete pass, yes. James Wilson was the man who broke it up. Wade Butler on the receiving end of it, attempting to receive it. Bobbles it, Butler does, you see there. Once again, they're trying to get the ball in their big play man's hands, but uh, you would think at this juncture they would probably put it in the air, but they haven't thrown very many passes today. Three of seven is the uh, buck on Hayes, as a matter of fact. There's Baggett in punt formation. Gets a pretty good rush, but also gets away a decent kick. Summer settles under it at the 39. Up to the 40, 45, 46. Let's go down to Ted Hall. Ted? Guys, I just talked to Sean Summers right before he went out to grab that punt. Just kind of asked how he was going. And he said he's still scared. And I said, what are you most scared of? He said, I'm scared to death. I'm going to drop the ball. A true freshman out there returning punts. Something he rarely did in high school. He's had hands of glue so far today. Maybe it's the, the jitters are jittering the right way. Well, he's looked very good. That punt was for 42 yards, the return for six. Tennessee goes on offense now with 6.52 remaining in the third quarter. Volunteers operating in pretty decent field position right here. Heath Schuler hands off to his tailback and a little running room in there by Mose Phillips. Mose out of Nashville, Tennessee, Hillsborough High School. He moves it down to the 40, the 47 yard line. Tennessee trying to add to the margin here. They hand off again to uh, Phillips. And get good running room this time and good running by Phillips as he gets down to the 40-yard line. Mose Phillips turned that head down. He, he looked more like a fullback than a tailback on that one, Connor. Well, well Mose is one of those tweeners. You know, he's, he's heavy enough to be a fullback and shifty enough to be a running back, and he does both of them pretty good. I mean, he's a good guy to, to be able to give everybody a rest in the backfield there. Ball squarely on the 40-yard line, as you see, where it becomes first down and 10 to go for the Volunteers. Looking at a five-man front by USL. They drop one of the backers off this time. Here's a delay to Phillips. Got hit in the backfield, stumbled, got maybe a half yard or so, and that's about it. Crashing in that time was Sherard. Tibido, 6'3", 304. Kind of hard for him to sneak in there at 304 pounds, but uh, he did. He got underneath everybody that time and made the stop. Looks like a little holding penalty against Tennessee. And it's going to be marked off, and it's the big one, as you see. All the way back to the 49. 10-yard penalty against the Volunteers. By 41, the clock has stopped. That much time remaining in quarter number three. Next week, Tennessee goes on the road to Georgia. Down between the hedges. Georgia playing South Carolina tonight. And trailing at last report early in the ball game, three to nothing. That'll be a heck of a game. 
Here's Schuler delaying, handing it off to Mose Phillips. Phillips dances outside. Look out. He's to the sidelines and got the first down. Nice running by Mose Phillips. About 40 yards away from the play down here, Condridge, one of the wide receivers, Ronald Davis, was throwing a block. That'll look good on the film. Blocking <laughs> downfield. Uh, that's, that's the way to get some brownie good. points. That's you what bet. you're supposed to do. Coaches will like that. But I think we've got another blocking in the back or a holding field. There's a flag thrown during the process of the run. So where they're huddled, I think it might be against Tennessee. Five sixteen remaining in quarter number three. We're waiting the official word here on what this one is, but uh, obviously it's against Tennessee as they retreat. Here it comes. I got a personal foul against the defense. I got holding against the offense. Replay the down. I got a double hit that time. Wow. Tennessee moving the football, but the penalties are killing them in this drive. 31 to 3, Volunteers leading. Here's Heath Schuler. Looking over the defense this time. Got a man in motion coming to the bottom of your screen. Setting now. Schuler delays, fakes the delay, and throws over the middle. It is caught. Sliding down with the ball is Craig Faulkner at about the 36-yard line. Play went for 14 yards. Great little play-action pass, and he just waits for Craig Faulkner to come open in the zone. Good little shot, nice throw. They're, they're attacking this, this defense exactly where you have to attack it, up the middle. Faulkner was injured in the offseason in a motorcycle accident. There was some concern about his wrist being well for this game but forget that he's obviously okay here's some dancing nice move look out all the way down to the seven yard line James little man Stewart covers 30 yards boy the Tennessee tailbacks getting more impressive as the game wears on part of that may be to the fact country that the US L defense is wearing down because they're being pounded now. Well, I tell you, this run here is another another example of what you can't coach. You know, you get to teach people to dodge people like that is something that they either have or they don't have. And little man is just trying to show us that he, Aaron, and Aaron's not the only guy that can run like that. He can too. Full house backfield this time for Heath Schuler. He may be checking off. He turns. He's going to keep it. Touchdown, Heath Schuler. Heath Schuler walks it in. Just the down the line option, and he takes the option to keep it, and it was just nobody there. Great blocking. They sealed off very well. Another dimension to the Tennessee offensive attack this year. There's the kick up, up there, and it is good by Bexport. Rushing now, Tennessee 225 yards, USL 30 yards. We'll take a look at that one again as you take a look at the option here of Heath Schuller in just a moment. Tell you what, it's been a while since we've had uh, option quarterbacking. The guy sitting to my right used to do that quite well, Mr. Condridge Holloway. Condridge? Well, the thing about the option this year, oh, 12 men. The option this year is not an element of surprise. It's something that's a part of the offense. Last year, when Andy Kelly ran the option, I was probably 95,000 people going, what was that? And Andy was <laughs> surprised, too, when he ran Yes, but here it is. It's, it'll, 
this will be an integral part of the offense with all three quarterbacks. They can do this very well. All three of the Tennessee quarterbacks are basically the same size. Let's go down on the sidelines, Ted. Bob and Condors were right smack dab in the middle of the big orange fans. All the Tennessee fans here on this side of the field and, and, and Sherry Gregory. Nice shirt. <laughs> I don't know why I did this. I had no idea that they were red. <laughs> you didn't know they were red? No. Plus, you got some advice. She's from Tullahoma, by the way. You got some advice? You gave her some advice? Right. I, I told her that when she got here that it's not Alabama, <laughs> so maybe no one would notice, but you did notice. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm sorry about it. We won't tell anybody that you're wearing red okay. in the Tennessee I section. I thought it might look orange in the dark. Do you want to say hi to all your, your friends in Tullahoma? Yeah. Hey, Kurt, and all of you all. I didn't say names. I just said hi. Hi. Oh, by the way, the Tennessee fans in front of her did donate something. I'm supposed to hide. Put that on. Big orange fans are big orange. That's all there is to it. Okay, thank you, Ted. Here's Joey Chapman's kick. Going to be fielded at the four-yard line by Wade Butler. Got a seam. Look out. All the way up to the 47-yard line. Nice return by Wade Butler. Boy, you saw that one opening up, Condridge, real sure quick. There's a penalty flag on the play, but it's probably offside to Tennessee, and they will decline that for sure. This is the best field position they've had in quite some time. Here it is. On the kick refused. It'll be first down. Take a look at it again here. There's Wade Butler. They finally got Jacobic blocked. And that's, a, believe it or not, that's a, the great play by a kicker. You know, usually kickers don't get involved too much in that contact. But all you got to do is slow them down a little bit and let the, let the troops come in and help you. We got a new quarterback in. And he's running with the football and crossing midfield down to about the 48-yard line. That's James Freeman, who's a senior, a lot bigger guy than uh, Tawan Hayes. James is 6'2", 218 pounds, and he moves it across midfield. One of the better uh, offensive plays in quite some time for the Ragin' Cajuns. And Tennessee the, leading 38-3. to three. If the first play is any indication of what they're thinking now, I think they're going to put the ball in the air a little bit. And I guess they realize they can't get back in this game by running the ball. Here he is back to throw. Fires almost intercepted. Knocked down by Tennessee. Ben Talley was all over that one. Big number 90. I like this guy. I liked him last year, Condridge. He's got tremendous range. He really moves laterally. He sure does. And they, they brought him along slowly. This is just a little bootleg, and he almost gets there. Almost. That would have been six for Mr. Talley. Third down conversions now. USL is two of 11. And here they're facing one now. Third down and five. Look who's warming up. Todd Helton. Word is he will not be redshirted, but we'll have to wait and see. Here's Freeman back to throw. Got a little time and completes his pass. And it's going to be for a first down to Wade Butler. Wade Butler. 39-yard line will be where it's spotted. Back on Jenkins. Deron Jenkins, a true freshman, made the stop. Just a little half roll. They ran a flood pattern to the wide side of the field. That way you, you cover all three levels. You have a short guy, an intermediate guy, and a deep guy. Then you take your pick. Whichever one the defense covers, you go opposite. Again, Todd Eldon is warming up. Should he choose to be uh, play baseball, he could be drafted again after his sophomore year. So they may figure why I waste him here as they hand off to Isaac Benefield, the tailback. And he crashes down to about the 35. So southwestern Louisiana is moving the football right now under the direction of number two quarterback, James Freeman, who is more of a passing quarterback. But he's uh, shown that he can move the football pretty well right here. This is a pretty good little mini drive, shall we say, going for the Ragin' Cajuns, who trail 38-3 getting fairly late in quarter number three. To give you a chance, I think, to see some uh, fresh faces for Tennessee, you're going to see more true freshmen, perhaps, in the next few minutes or so. That's Benefield, the tailback, trying to slide outside, and he slid down to the ground under the grasp of James Wilson. 
Butler, by the way, three receptions for 30 yards, and he is the all-time uh, reception leader at Southwestern Louisiana. The ball is spotted right on the 35-yard line, where it becomes a third down situation. Jesse Sanders is the man down for the Volunteers. He is a redshirt freshman, a backup linebacker. Been pretty impressive in the fall workouts and has moved into a number two spot. He's number 22, so keep your eye on him here. You can see what happened right there. Oh, he got sandwiched. Ooh. He got, uh, yes, <laughs> by his own player. A little knee action. He'll be sore tomorrow. Jesse came to uh, Tennessee Condridge as a running back, but with a stable of running backs they had here, they didn't want to waste his talent, so they moved him to defense, and he's been pretty impressive there. But that is a sight you do not like to see when there is no weight put on that uh, right leg. Tennessee, very young, very inexperienced at linebacking. However, they do have talented people there, and there's one of them being helped off the field, Jesse Sanders. Third down, now at six yards to go. Ball on the 35-yard line, and James Freeman brings his ball club up. Will he throw right here? Probably so. And probably not. He got creamed. Everything caved in in the middle that time for James Freeman. There's Willie Richards, one of the first guys in on it. Big number 94. They just uh, would have no part of being blocked that time. Uh, Tennessee, a good rush. Little blitz action here, and everybody gets to the quarterback. It was just an all-out effort, and this enthusiasm is getting to be contagious again. Reggie Ingram was also in on that one, the middle linebacker. There's Jesse Sanders on the sideline. As you can see, he's in some pain as the trainers are working with him now. 38 to three, Tennessee leading. And USL trying to, I guess, go for it right here, Condridge. Uh, They've got to. I mean, have no choice, really, when you're down by that much. And, Got a minute 49 to go in the third quarter. You're in Tennessee territory on the 35-yard line. What's the advantage of uh, kicking the ball away? Tennessee putting some pressure on him, and they cave it in again. Everything in the middle just caved in. Tennessee all over him. Defensively, the Volunteers would not be denied. Just a blitz from the outside, and it was just Horace Morris comes through, and Willie Richards. Willie Richards, it's a host of volunteers. It's uh, they're having a field day. I think it's starting to be a little bit of fun for those guys. That's Horace Morris, number 85. I'm, uh, I'm impressed with his pass rush ability. Very strong guy. So on the fourth down situation. Of course, they didn't make it. Tennessee takes it over now. Here's a handoff. That's Charlie Garner. Garner showing you some of the speed that we'd heard so much about. And the good moves as he gets up to nice. midfield and just across. Nice visibility here. He sees the hole to the backside and makes the cutback. You know, that's another thing that's not easily taught that cutback move you just have to have that ability to feel that there's nobody back there and make the cut without having to look and see it comes under the heading of a slashing type runner right there it's caught with standing up firing down the sideline Ooh, just a little too far just got to get a little more air on that one let That's Dwayne it. Freeman just a half a step too much good decision though he had one-on-one -on -one coverage and with a receiver the size of Freeman You've got better than a 50-50 chance to make that reception because he's a big guy. Dwayne Freeman is 6'2", wow. 205 pounds. Take a look at that, folks. 428 to 73 in the total yardage department for Tennessee. 
That comes, I think, under the category of domination. And this time there's a mix-up apparently in the backfield. Quarterback spun around. Colquitt had nowhere to uh, nowhere to go and no one to hand it off to. That's your worst nightmare on a counter option in the backside end coming down to hit you in the face. <laughs> that was James Pennington who crashed in to make the stop and the loss of yardage. It becomes second down and 13 now. Tennessee with the football. Third down. Here's Colquitt back, rolling to his right, looking, throwing, incomplete. In and out of the hands of the intended receiver would not have been enough for a first down on the sidelines anyway. And that was Kendrick Jones, number 27, the intended receiver. So it becomes a fourth down situation now, and Tennessee will send in the punting team. Confirmation, Tom Hunt. Button two punts, 30 yard average. Good, good news is, of course, he hasn't uh, had to punt that much. Takes his time, puts a lot of foot into this one. Fair catch call for and taken at about the uh, 12 yard line. Now let's go down to the sidelines. Ted, we'll go down to Ted in just a second. Right now it is six seconds remaining in the quarter. 38 to 3. Tennessee Volunteers leading southwestern Louisiana. It's amazing how a guy that is known for never fair catching fumbles one ball and he's fair catching them all now. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> These things have a way of changing your opinions on things. They remain with uh, Freeman operating at quarterback. Southwestern Louisiana delayed to the tailback. Uh, not much a yard or two in the middle of that time. Steve Mosek. Okay, thank you very much, Ted. Southwestern with the football. Rolling back is Freeman trying to get away from the pressure. It does get away. Still running up to about the 19-yard line, close to the 20 before he is knocked down. Doing a pretty good job of getting out of what looked like some real serious trouble that time. Tennessee finally closed it down, but it's uh, short of a first down and becomes a third down and at least three to go for a first. As we start quarter number four here in Knoxville, interestingly enough, the crowd of 95,000 plus still for the most part in their seats. A few people might start hitting for the exits, but a lot of people came here to see the Tennessee young players in action tonight, and you're going to see some of them in this quarter. You've already seen a number of them. Here's a pitch back to Mosek, the tailback. He cuts outside, and I think he got the first down by maybe a half a yard or so. Mosek was run out of bounds over there. It may have been Sean Summers who ran him out. First downs now. USL 4, Tennessee 20 in this ball game. Let's take a look, and you'll see one of those true freshmen coming up as we were talking about. There's Mosek. Sean Summers, one of the leaders on defense. Clock stop, now it starts to run again, 38 to three. Tennessee pretty comfortable right now. Trying to test a lot of people here and see if they can get ready for a big game at Georgia next week. Wade Butler comes in motion to the bottom of your screen. Freeman back, looks that way. Now has to come out of the pocket, being chased all through it. Wide to his left. Actually a Tennessee player, the closest one to it. Sean Summers in your screen there. Almost, uh, had he not slipped, might have been in for his first interception as a volunteer. That one had interception written all over it if it was up high enough. There's a flag down on the field, and I think the penalty is going to go against the Ragin' Cajuns. With as much time as he had, I would imagine it's a holding penalty. See the situation it becomes a first and 20 now as the USL team finds itself deep into their own territory where they're back to the wall penalty situation not too bad I guess for an opening football game on either side 
Here's Freeman back. Throws a little flat pass out to his tail back to his run out of bounds. Far, far short of any first down. That was actually to Todd Thomas, who's a warrior back or a wing back or in some formations it's called an H back. One of the changes that the Louisiana team made this year using that back for the most part in motion or at least giving them some options. There he is, Todd Thomas, who's going off to the sidelines. He's backed up by Damon Denneberg. Scott Gallion is in now at the uh, linebacker for Tennessee and was in on that stop. Now there's a true freshman for you also. Here comes Butler in motion. And here comes Freeman back to throw, being chased, in trouble. Fires it incomplete. Threw it a little bit behind the intended receiver, Damon Denneberg, who just came in. And we were talking about at the wingback spot. Scott Gallion was there again defensively. Scott Gallion is a 6'3", 220-pound true freshman, big number 93. Look at him. Almost had his sack right there, but he did put enough pressure on him that it forced Freeman to kind of throw behind the intended receiver. It was much work, though, as the quarterback went through to get that ball off. you got to catch that one. <laughs> you got to catch that one. Third down and 18 to go. Here is Freeman throwing. This one will be intercepted. Nice return that time, and there is Sean Summers. He got his interception. But we have a flag down. So let's wait and see what happens on this one. There's the youngster, Summers. Well, you can forget red shirt for a lot of people here tonight, Condridge. That's right. <laughs> Gallion just came in, of course. He's played some. Sean Summers has played an awful lot tonight, and there have been others. So Tennessee, like a lot of other teams in the Southeastern Conference and around the country, let's listen to the official Defensive call. Defensive pass interference. First down. Oh. Call went against Tennessee, and it nullified Sean Summers' interception. So it's... Instead of an interception in Tennessee's football, it's a first down and 10 to go for the Ragin' Cajuns. Take a look. Yeah, there was a little contact before. Might have been. But Sean, that, he'll still have to take a little ribbon right here. The turf monster gets him. Watch this. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. So he, he, he better get ready in the film session. He'll have to fess up to that one. All right. A break for USL. Here's Freeman back to throw, getting a little pressure. Dumps it out in the left flat. And it's up close to, but not quite a first down to Steve Mosek coming out of the tailback position out of the backfield. Don't know that he was the primary receiver. Look at this one. Ole wow. Miss in the fourth quarter, 31 to 14 over Auburn. Hmm. That game being played in Oxford, but Ole Miss went into that ball game with Auburn as uh, about a five, five and a half point underdog. Those are what the odds makers know early in the season especially. Here's Mosek running for the first down up uh, across the 40 to the, about the 43 yard line before he is driven out of bounds. Steve White, red shirt freshman at linebacker on the right side was the man who rode him out. Tennessee shuffling a lot of people in and out, which is good as they get ready for a couple of brutal Southeastern Conference games coming up. And the way Cincinnati was playing earlier tonight against Penn State, uh, that's going to be a pretty tough game also. It's always tough for Tennessee because everybody can salvage a season by beating them, and that's, that's what makes Tennessee tradition great. Everybody wants to beat it. As the tailback, Isaac Benefield, number two tailback carrying this time across the 45 to about the 46-yard line before he is hit by Jester, Nick Jester, another new face in there. There you see him, number 45 made the stop. Another one of the pure freshmen. 11.27 remaining in the contest. Tennessee Volunteers 38, USL 3. the handoff to the tailback who's going to cross midfield into Tennessee territory to about the 48-yard line. 
Benefield was carrying the football. By the way, Mosex averaged tonight 1.6. And he's uh, had some very hard yards. He has been a workhorse tonight, but he hasn't been able actually to uh, crack the Tennessee defense. We may see Helton at quarterback in this quarter. There is some belief that that will happen. Right now, USL with a modest drive going here into Tennessee territory. And the handoff is to the tailback again. This time off his left guard and tackle. Isaac Benefield gets down to about the, I think they'll pull it back to about the 45 yard line, but it'll move the chains. Scott Gallion was there. Steve White also. Steve White, who moved from linebacker in preseason to a defensive end spot, made the stop. Ball is resting on the 45, where it is indeed first down and 10. There is Helton, who chose football over baseball, at least for the time being. Here is the pass over the middle. Fumble. Tennessee's going to come up with it. Tim Cross, it appears, came up with it. We'll have to wait and see who made the stick in there. Big, big hit in the middle that time for Tennessee. Take a look. Here's Freeman firing over the middle. Bang. And there is Frost coming up with the football, and he gets rattled pretty good, too. Just a little dump off, but not a great job of tackling there on the initial hit, but the backside tackle. Jeremy Spivey, I think, was the man who made the stick on him that time. Tennessee takes over. It is still Colquitt at quarterback. Long throw just out of the grasp of the intended receiver down there. I think it was Freeman. Wayne Freeman. Hey, when you get matchups like that, you got to make that throw. You got to make that catch. One on one to the field. You got to make that play. But when you're young, you don't always do that. They won't miss that much, though. Somewhere in this quarter, Condridge, uh, I'm going to ask you for your quarterback evaluation tonight. Okay. Jerry Colquitt is still operating at quarterback right now. Rolling back, gives off to his tailback, Moe's Phillips, and Phillips gets to the 45-yard line before he is knocked down. Look at that, Mississippi. Billy Brewer, a lot of people think this win, lose, or draw might be his final year. I'll say Billy is starting it out in fine style, 45-14, to 14, crushing the Auburn Tigers. Must be very happy tonight in the Oxford, Mississippi area. Qualquit resets Mose Phillips to his left. Now Qualquit back to throw, throws it out in the flat, a little too high, and off the hands of the intended receiver, Kenneth Campbell, coming out of the backfield. Schuler, 8 of 9 for 131 yards. Colquitt, 4 of 11 for 61. Condridge, your evaluation of the quarterbacks. Well, who will um, start next week? I think they'll start Schuler next week, but and they might do the same format they did this time. But as far as the evaluation of, bo evaluation of both guys, they both have made mistakes. What I've liked is that they both came back at, from the adversity and the mistakes that they made and still played like they weren't scared they went ahead and did the things that they do they weren't afraid to throw the ball and uh, you know you just got to like that in a young player even though he made mistakes he didn't just fold the tin up he, he came back and uh, still played football and that I think is impressive well you saw Greg Roberts heading down the sidelines with a punt but it is going to be brought back it's covered 48 yards the punt by the way but the flag was down, uh, far back downfield, and we assume a hold or a clip. There it is against USL. So it'll nullify what could have been a very big play for the Raging Cajuns, and everything will be brought back. Tennessee leading, as you see the scoreboard, 38-3, to 3, 8 minutes and 52 seconds remaining. Hope you're enjoying and hope you have enjoyed tonight's telecast. 
will be with you later on in the season on other events, other games. And we'll look forward to seeing you down the line. Should be an exciting football season. Off to a rocking start from a Tennessee point of view here tonight. Not too pleasing for the team from Lafayette, Louisiana. But they have a chance to bounce back and uh, salvage a very good season. Nelson Stokely is a man who knows how to win. He was a winning quarterback at LSU. Later was an assistant coach at Clemson, by the way, when they won a national championship. So they'll get the job done. Most of their players, by the way, are from the state, almost all of them from uh, Louisiana, a few from Texas, one or two from Florida and California. A little quarterback dance work in the middle of that time. That's Reggie Hayes. We've got our third quarterback operating now for the Southwestern team. University of Southwestern Louisiana has used Taiwan Hayes, James Freeman, and now Reggie Hayes, 5'8", 173-pound sophomore. Tennessee getting some fresh people in on defense. They have a number of people they're wanting to look at tonight and have already done so and will continue to do so. Okay, Reggie Hayes. Tennessee jumped and contact was made. So the flags come down. It'll cost the balls five on that one. That was Yatkowski who jumped offside. Pick number 99. A little too anxious. No, Paul. Big pause from Winnipeg. Winnipeg, Manitoba. Shane Bonham is from Alaska, and uh, Yatkowski is from Canada. Cold weather type guys. Well, they know all about ice fishing. Let's just put it that way. They're probably suffering down there tonight, <laughs> though. Reggie Hayes, that quarterback for the Ragin' Cajuns, turns, puts it in the stomach, tries to have the first man, pulls it back out, and then pays the price. Got nailed big time. Jester, number 45, crashing in there. Nick Jester. Hey, that old... Ole Miss and Auburn score was just announced to the crowd here. That's the roar you hear in the background. South Carolina leading Georgia six to nothing at the half in Columbia, South Carolina. And for people who haven't been there and seen a football game, they're in for uh, maybe a surprise. That is a tremendous place to play football. It's a great atmosphere here's a long pass upfield and complete to Wade Butler that was just a nice catch actually Condridge pretty good defense by Tennessee Butler just took it away from uh, Sean Summers well that was some of the some of the qualities that I was talking about before the game that Wade Butler possesses he uh, he's a quality receiver he goes up he has very strong hands and he just basically went up and took that ball away. And that was, a, that was just a great play for him. That covered 33 yards. It's on the 47-yard line of the Ragin' Cajuns with 6.48 to go in the football game as southwestern Louisiana tries to mount some offense here in the final six minutes of this contest, sending Butler in motion. And now Reggie Hayes seems a little bit... Uh, uncertain of himself so he calls a timeout i think they got a penalty didn't it might have been instead of a delay timeout. a game well that's the third quarterback in there and may have been checking off at the line condridge took a little too much time condridge were you ever in a situation either as a pro or in, in college that uh, the two tennessee quarterbacks were in tonight where you were uncertain about a situation like that yes uh, when I went to Canada, a quarterback by the name of Tommy Clements and myself shared the quarterback and duties, and uh, we didn't know who was going to start until the playing of the national anthem, and both of us would start out on the field, and the coach would hold one of them back. It was that bad, but uh, <laughs> it worked out, and I think this situation will work out, too. Ray Weathers, the ball carrier, the number three tailback for southwestern Louisiana. Let's go down to Ted. Ted? A lot. It wouldn't be a Tennessee football game without David Keith being here. Of course, he's one of the very successful Knoxvillians, a native star of movies, star of TV shows, and probably Tennessee's biggest fan. At least, I, I think you'll claim that, won't you? Well, I don't know if anybody spends any, as much money getting back to the games as I do, but uh, 
I shoot my new television show, Local Heroes, at Paramount on Friday nights. Then I head straight to the airport, catch a midnight flight, and get in here on Saturday morning. Time to eat breakfast, my mom's breakfast, and make it to the game. So. You've been more to more Tennessee games than the sportscasters in this town. Uh, just about. <laughs> what else have you got going then? You've got that TV show and anything else? Yeah, and I'm playing my band, Dim Bones. We'll be playing here in Knoxville uh, at the uh, University Club on the Strip after the Florida game. And uh, did a movie called Distant Cousins, which they may change the name to Family Reunion. I'm not sure. I did that in July. That should be out in February. The new TV show will start in, it's going to be a mid-season replacement on NBC in, uh, in January, probably. What do you think about the Vols? Kind of nervous at the start. I noticed you were bouncing up and down on the side. Yeah, I was kind of shaky. Looked like the guys just met each other at breakfast for the first time. But, uh, boy, I love uh, Coach Fulmer in the, in the dressing room said, uh, said something about no mercy. And that's always been my philosophy of football. And uh, I like this. A coach... He had to rehearse, I think, in a way, rehearse. He had some time to rehearse his pregame speech. Came out pretty well, though. It came out real well. He was very articulate. He brought the guys together. And I know everybody misses Coach Majors. Hi, Coach Majors. Mary Lynn, hope, you, hope you're doing real good. We hear you're jumping around pretty good. So can't wait to have you back. But uh, yeah, well, they pulled together real well. And I think uh, Coach Fulmer's done a great job. And I don't think anybody expected him to do any less. Thank you very much, David Keith. Good luck with your TV and your movies coming up. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Back up top. Okay, thank you, Ted. There was a completed pass to Butler and then a play on the sideline with a flag falling over there. And they had a flag on the previous play, play which they just simply picked up and waved off. But we'll wait and see, Condridge, what this one is. Well, it, it looks like they're going to call a, a roughing penalty or unnecessary What's roughing. What's the foul against the defense? And I guess they're saying the ball was uncatchable or past him and uh, all he basically did was play football. That's Jesse Sanders, and uh, that does not look good. Jesse, uh, with an ankle or a knee injury, obviously his right leg uh, giving him some uh, problems there. And he is being helped to the dressing room. Number two, linebacker. And a very important man in the Tennessee defense, but uh, as you can see, obviously hurting right now here's Hayes rolling throwing over the middle almost intercepted was it intercepted let's see if the official rules if it's a trap or an interception they're going to confer and try to decide among themselves it is intercepted Tennessee Deron Jenkins a true freshman gets his first interception for Tennessee six foot 170 pounder came in here with a uh, a lot of talk about how good this youngster was going to be, and they threw him right to the wolves tonight, Condridge. That's a good way to start it. Well, there's a great example of, for all you young guys that are out there playing ball, whenever something like this happens, you jump up like you just made the biggest play of your life. I think they talked them into that one because <laughs> that looked like it skipped. Let's see. But <laughs> when you jump up and down like, yes, I caught it, boy, you can trick them sometimes. Tennessee trying to run that left side this time. And Todd Helton is at quarterback. And it's Charlie Garner carrying it. There you see him. So forget the red shirt year for Todd Helton. He is out there on the field. True freshman from right here in Knoxville who turned down almost half a million dollars from the San Diego Padres baseball organization. And since he reported to school, he cannot be drafted again until his junior year. Big hole, crashing through, Charlie Garner. Crossed the 35 to the 38-yard line. And a first down for the Volunteers with four minutes and 30 seconds to go. 16-yard gain. Got a quick burst of speed, Condridge, coming through the line. Came through a pretty gaping hole, too. Those guys are doing a good job of coming together I think they're they're. this is really going to be a plus for them this this series will give them something in the film room on whenever probably be Monday or Tuesday that'll give them something positive they can sit and look at and will also give them some educational film as to what how they can get better that was Garner's eighth carry of the night he's got about 53 yards right now Bob uh, would you turn down $450,000 no. <laughs> I like I like I'd ask you. I like football and I like the University of Tennessee and the atmosphere, but hey, uh, a lot of money. Here comes Charlie Garner. 
all the way down into Caton Kentry, down to the 36-yard line before he is run out of bounds. I think the fans like what they see with this junior college tailback transfer. He was originally signed by the University of Miami, wound up in Arizona to junior college, and now he's in Tennessee. And are they happy? Great cutback ability. And you can, like I've said many times tonight, you don't coach that. That's another, something that's natural. Another 22 yards. Helton keeps it this time. Can't Get find down. anywhere to go. Gets spun down. And welcome to big time football. Yes. <laughs> William Sims, 6'3", 250 pounders. Spun him down that time. Condridge, we were talking in a, a pregame meeting about Helton and your assessment is that he's got a, a ways to go in some of the mechanics uh, of football as, as a lot of freshmen do. Well, that's that's only normal. I mean, he was such a great athlete in the Knoxville High School Football League there. And a lot of times when you're that much better than others, you don't concentrate on the fundamentals as much as you should. That, and then when you get to this level, that's essential. You cannot perform adequately if you don't have the correct fundamentals. He is a super, super talent, but you know it's going to take a little while, and I think he'll get there. That's Mose Phillips said in the backfield. Here's another true freshman that has bypassed the red shirt, Shane Burton, at, in a tight end, 6'6", 255 pounder. Garner's the leading rusher now with 78 yards in this uh, football game. Here's Helton turning inside on the keeper play and getting a yard or two before they knock him down. Tennessee, of course, like other major college football programs, knows how important it is, Condridge, to have that third quarterback. If your number one guy goes down, hey, you're just the one injury away from number three there. And uh, some teams have been caught in that web sometimes, and it's a very dangerous situation. Very dangerous because big-time football, especially now with the amount of SEC games you have to play, Injury is something that you never count on, but more than likely with playing so many SEC teams, it's going to happen. And you have to be prepared for that. Fair catch, as you see there, and taking over now at the nine-yard line will be USL with two minutes and three seconds remaining in the contest. Tennessee, after the first few minutes of this ball game tonight, to be honest with you, has just totally dominated. Tennessee's defense has been absolutely superb, and the offense has been more than adequate. Here's a handoff in the middle, and it's off to the tailback, Mosek, and they get a couple of yards. Obviously, at this point, USL knows they have absolutely no chance of doing anything here except running out the clock and uh, trying to prevent Tennessee from scoring again, Condridge, so there's I, no need to put it in the air. Huh? That's what it looks like, and it looks like they, they made that decision about uh, midway the third quarter because they have not tried to advance the ball downfield, but maybe twice in the, uh, the whole second half. But I know you're if you're a running team, that's your bread and butter, but when you're in a situation like this, you've got to put the ball in the air. Pitch back to the tailback, who's run out of bounds here. Clock continues Stop to run with a minute 17 to go. Armstrong on the carry. And Jeremy Spivey. At the bottom of that pile was Jeremy Spivey, who's backing up Reggie Ingram at middle linebacker. For the volunteers, Jeremy Spivey out of Brentwood Academy in Nashville. Reggie Ingram, of course, out of Memphis. A couple of Tennessee guys at the middle linebacker post for the Volunteers. So the clock has gone under the minute mark now. Tennessee with a very successful opening victory here. Here's Mosek, the tailback, stumbling and getting across the 20, getting his first down as he got it out to about the 21-yard line. It's number 30 instead of 20, so that is Armstrong carrying the football. There you see the time, 33 seconds. Tennessee will have just tonight to celebrate and then they gotta start looking at that trip to Athens, Georgia and Ray Goff's Georgia Bulldogs. They'll be facing one of the better quarterbacks around in Eric Zire. But they better take a look at what South Carolina, I guess, is doing to Zire tonight. Last we heard, 
Carolina was shutting out Georgia. There's Tennessee's defense closing down and permitting nothing. Jester, Nick Jester, 6'1", 200 pounder. And that's the end of the ball game. The Tennessee Volunteers open the season tonight with a big, big win, 38-3 over Southwestern Louisiana.